So I'll, I'll, I'll start from the beginning. You're in the integrity series. We're going to measure what's on the inside of us. I, I want you to see this title. Uh, it is the crucibles of life, the ordeals, those things that happen you have no control of, those things you never believed would happen to you. And then I want you to see your lesson. What you have is not who you are. You are, de you are not defined and shaped by the things that you own. And then I want you to understand that if there is an outcome today, it would be to let your light shine at all times, regardless of what you're going through. I mean, even in this church today, you've heard the, the, the report that there, uh, some are in the hospital. Young Isaac went to the hospital and is just getting back. Tom went to the hospital yesterday. Um, uh, Pastor Hines lost his mom, and uh, we're finding out that Tim and Daphne just lost uh, an aunt this morning. And we, in this church, we've lost the oldest, I believe the oldest or closest oldest member to, to uh, in this church, which is Aunt Darlene, who's been with the ministry for six and a half years. She went home to be with the Lord um, just, uh, I believe, maybe Saturday night. So, Thursday night and so next week we'll be getting ready for her uh, homecoming through it all we must praise God we must become a stronger people understanding how to deal with trials because they will come and so I have a quote for you this morning this is from uh, the, the um, tit not Ted, but Joseph P Kennedy who is the father of John and Ted and Robert Kennedy he says when the going gets tough, and you all heard this before, the tough get going. It's simple. Whatever's on the inside of you, when the crucibles of life come, is what you're going to be able to use to deal with that. If you have nothing on the inside of you, when you meet with the crucibles of life, you're going to shatter. Now is the time to build up. Now is the time to say, God, show me how to live. Show me how to walk. Increase me in integrity. So when the time comes that I'm facing that place in life I never dreamed of, I have something to hold on to. Your English definition this morning, it will remain the same throughout the series. It is integrity. The quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. Your Greek transliteration 90 from Strong's. Did I pronounce this word last week? Ade Athria. So, th so th okay, this, is, this will be our, our Greek word for this uh, particular series. Ade aftheria. It is simply incorruptibility. We have to have the type of integrity that no matter what comes our way, we're able to say no to it if it's not of God. You want to be just that strong. You have one critical point throughout this entire series. So each time we present, you will have just one point because I want you to remember it. We will not be confused. Listen to this. God is my source. If you walk out of here today with anything, I want you to be able to see that God is your source. We're holding on to everything else. Don't you know the more things you acquire, the more you up, depend on acquired things? The more things you receive, you become dependent on those things. So, how many, so you remember when you could, it was a time when you could leave your house without your cell phone, right? 
Now you, you travel 30 miles. You go, you go back home. If you, if you left your phone, you go 30 miles home to, to get it. Like you can't live without it. You see, God is speaking to us when it comes down to material things. When it comes down to possessions and even people. We have to understand that they are not forever. It is a tough lesson to learn that life is give and take. I want to take you to the oldest book in the Bible. Some say it was written somewhere around 2000 BC. The book is called Job. You've heard the story over and over again about this man who has great wealth and he loses everything and maintains his integrity. Would you go with me to Job 1, 14. Now Job is living in a place called us. It could be considered uh, Northwest or Northeast Palestine. He is prosperous among all men in the land. He receives a report much like we receive today that people are hurt, people are dying. And even as I was back in the back doing my studies, I received a text from the hospital. You, those of you that remember Aunt, no, Anna and Derek, she's been in labor since last night. She's trying to have this baby. And I want you all to pray that that baby comes out. I've never been labeled before, but I heard. <laughs> you see, he's going to receive some bad news. He's going to receive the type of news that knocks you to your knees. The, the news that you said, wow, one, I didn't know that all of this could happen at one time. You see, you know what it's like to receive some bad news and then receive bad news on top of that. And then some more bad news on top of that. And before it's over, you say, God, I can't take any more. Let's get rooted inside of Christ so that when the crucibles of life come our way, we will be able to stand the test of time so that Others will know that God lives. Listen to this. Verse 14 of Job 1. A messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys were grazing nearby. Now, this is the wildlife that they use for their livelihood. I call them utility creatures. Go with me to the next verse. Verse 15. It says, And... The Sabaeans, these are bandits from Southwest Arabia. It says they attacked and made off with them and put the servant to the sword. And I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. So listen, so listen to this. Job is suffering human casualties. If, you, if you, you look here, you can see that his workforce is now decimated. If you, you, you examine the scripture, you see that he had a loss of his service animals. And then, with, if you go with me to verse 16, it says, and while he was still speaking, you know why that's important? He, the, 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 the writers, which we don't know who actually wrote, Job. Well, some believe that it's Job. Some say it could be Moses because it's such an early book. I mean, some say that that book could be written between 2000 and 1800 uh, uh, BC. So we don't know who the writers is. But the writers make sure for, that we understand that while he was receiving a piece of bad news, another more devastating piece of bad news was standing in line. That's life. That's, that, I'm describing life for you. 
No sooner than there's a car wreck over here, there's a foreclosure over there. And no sooner than there's somebody in the hospital over there, there's a death over here. And this is what, what, what's happening in the life of Job. He says, he says, and while he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, the fire of God fell from the heavens. Now, that's what they used to call lightning in the day and time. We, you know, we call it thunder and lightning. They call it the, the fire of God. And burned up the sheep. And the servants. Now, in that day and time, Job had 7,000 sheep. And I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. He suffers the loss of his animals that provide food and clothing. So remember, he lost his service animals first. Now he's losing his sheep. I mean, this is how they ate the sheep. Of course, you know, they made the cheese out of it. But also, they spun the wool. That's how they made their clothing. So he's losing everything. Go with me to verse 17. While he was still speaking. Think about it. All these people standing in line to give you bad news. While he was still speaking, <clears throat> another messenger came and said, the Chaldeans, those are gangsters from the north, uh, the north uh, Persian Gulf. They, 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 they do nothing but raid. They just raid camps. They don't work or anything like that. They go out and they take what they want. And this is what, what they do. They form three raiding parties. Now, when you really get, start to study the scripture, you'll see how uh, tactical they were. When it says they form these three raiding parties, that means they attack from all three sides. And then look at this. And swept down on your camels. That's your transportation. And made off with them. They put the servants to the sword. They killed again. And I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. There's theft of transportation. The organizers of the caravans are put to death. He's receiving this bad news. Now, go with me to verse 18. While he was still speaking, because you can imagine that Job was saying, you know how we say this? What else could go wrong? Don't ask that question. He says, while he was still speaking, yet another messenger came and said, your sons. Now, it's heading close to home. He says, your Son, your sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house. Verse 19, when suddenly a mighty wind swept from the desert and struck the four corners of the house. It collapsed on them and they are dead. And I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. This violent windstorms in the desert, the, the, the winds would get up so high, would, some very similar to what we would call a tornado. But the sand in this, this wind, it was like glass, the way it, it, it blows. It blows from all four corners. Now, you know that you very seldom will have a catastrophe, a wind damage that's going to blow from all four corners. And it kills his most precious assets, his family. Listen, listen to this. Job 20. I mean, one twenty. Th at this, Job got up and tore his robe. Now, that's the most expressive way of grieving. That's the most liveliest way in the days of old of grieving over something. It was to tear your robe. It says he shaved his head. That's a ceremony of mourning. Then he fell to the ground 
and worship that was exercising a position of posture, a, a, a posture of humility. And this is what he says. He says, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I will depart. I want to read something to you. Paul is either in Macedonia or Phil, in that Macedonia or Philippi. They don't actually know where. Some say that he's in Rome. Some, but I know it's just before he goes back to jail. He starts to write Timothy. It's probably somewhere around 64 AD. I want you to see what, how he explains to Timothy that money has no real value. Listen to this. Uh, 1 Timothy um, 6... 7. 1 Timothy 6, 7. He says, For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out. Listen to me, people. Who you are is not what you have. We've got it. We, we've some kind of way we've mixed up the most important things. Your word is the most valuable thing that you have. The way that you live is the most valuable thing that you have. It's about us making our commitment to God and saying to him, Lord, I want to be the best person that I can possibly be. And then letting people see that you love him through your actions. He says in, in the end, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. This is a person who has lost everything. And he says to God, None of these things matter. The most important thing in life, God, is my relationship with you. Why is that important? Because that's the only thing that can drive you to be a better person. Your relationship with Christ. Haven't we been through the crucibles of life? Haven't we been through those, those trials where we're sick? We're, we, you know, we're going through uh, issues and we, we wake up one morning and we just say, God, I thank you that I'm still alive. Because you realize that life itself is far more important than any of the things that you own. When you, when you look at it, I mean, there's always something new out here to get our attention. And we, you know, we think it's, you know, we think it's new and we got to have it. You know how it is when you lust after something. Like, like I see, um, and I'm not talking about anybody, you know, but I see these, the youth, they wear like jeans and the jeans have a hole in them when they bought them. <laughs> now where I come from, we had holy jeans too, but it was because we wore them out. We had them so long and we, we, they got holes in them, so we had that too. They introduce these things to us and it makes us think we cannot live without them. And as I said at the beginning of the sermon, we become dependent on the things that they've offered to us. When we begin to lose those things, those of us that don't have a, a, a healthy dose of self-esteem, we begin to think that we're less because we do not have. We have to be able to say to ourselves, and, and even saying to ourselves, but speaking to other people in, in a way that they can visualize what we're doing, that we're secure in just knowing Christ. We're not going to run after every little thing. We're not going to go out there and say, hey, you know what? Well, I got to have this because this person over here has it. I believe that a, a 
lot of us, maybe, maybe not all, but I believe that a, a lot of us define ourselves by our positions on our jobs. I believe that a lot of us define ourselves by the home that we live in. I believe that there are a lot of people define themselves based on the automobile that they've purchased or the automobiles that they've purchased. There are very few people that strive to be people of integrity at all times. We're always willing to let it go at the drop of a hat. Well, this person says something to me and now I'm really gonna tell them off. Maintain your integrity. You know, you're not the first person to ever told that person off. I don't even know why you, why you get all hot and bothered over. You're not the first person that told that person that they were a jerk. In fact, they're used to people calling them that. When, you, could change the, you could change the score by saying, you know what, I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to find a different way to approach this. Job loses everything. How many people in this room today, and you don't have to raise your hand, just hear what I'm saying. How many people in this room today are going through the crucibles of life right this second? The, the thing that you thought could never happen is happening to you right now. This is, this, is a, this is a young church. This is a small church. When someone has been a part of the ministry for six and a half years, we hurt. You know, when I think about Aunt Darlene and, you know, being a part of the, us, the ministry even before we started this, when we started recovery classes uh, years ago, she would come out and support that. When we started to the, the church, when we did prison ministry, everything that we did, she supported it. And even to the point where the transportation ministry just a month or two ago were picking her up from a senior's home to bring her in in a wheelchair. Those things hurt. But whatever is inside of you is what you have to reach for when those people, places, and Things are gone. Let me tell you, people, you are going to be shattered by life. Some of us that have said, I'm going to be with you forever, honey, are not going to be with that person in a year or five years from now. Some of us that have made great investments with our capital, we're going to look up one day and say, wow, that investment did not work out. Some of us that are living in our beautiful homes are going to say one day, wow, it's time to move. We need to study the principles of God now. The worst time to understand God is when you're going through the crucibles of life. You don't want to be a person coming to the church when something goes wrong. You want to be learning about God. You want to be studying his word. You want to be growing inside of him when everything is okay. And then when something comes along that hurts you so bad that you cannot get out of bed. The things that come along in your life that make you say, I wish I were dead. And you know you're not suicidal. There are some people in this room that know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the things in life that crush you, your child leaving this earth before you do. 
moms that been around forever and ever and ever and you had no thought that one day they were going to transition. Now is the time. Day after day, we must give our all. We cannot pick and choose the days that we decide to display integrity. The video that Nobi showed today show innocent kids mimicking the fathers and mothers that have no integrity. How many times have we called our jobs and say, hey, I'm not going to be in today. I have to do this, that, the other, and that is not the reason that you're staying home. We lack integrity. How many times have we put down on the application something that was not true so that we could be approved? Lack of integrity. How many times have we said we were going to do something and did not put every effort into making it happen? This is what integrity is all about. It's who you are when no one else is looking. And I know that through this integrity series, God is going to start to deal with those of us that are not truthful. Because it's so easy to lie. I know what that's like. I know I was a liar all my life. I almost never told the truth until you, until you made me. I remember I used to tell people, that we had horses. <laughs> they laughing because I grew up in D.C. <laughs> it, was a, it, was a cool, it was the coolest fantasy in the world. I was just like, yeah, yeah, we got horses. Yeah, I mean, so all I'm trying to say is, I, I understand what it's like to be a liar. I think in this series, we're going to find out that those of us that believe that we have integrity, that we need to work on it. We need to work on the perfection of integrity. Stop saying, I'll be there in five minutes when you're 80 miles away. Unless you're driving a helicopter or some type of Learjet or, you know, something like that, you're not going to be there in five minutes. Take the time to change your hours on your job if you can't get to work at six o'clock. Stop trying to get there before everybody. I mean, you're not worried about getting there at 6 o'clock in the morning. You're just worried about getting there before anybody else sees that you're late. You're hoping that everybody else is late. So you can come in at 6.15. Now there you are walking around making coffee like you have been there all night. No integrity. No integrity at all. We have to get to the root of, remember, Integrity is going to be different. The, the need to perfect integrity is going to be different for each one of us. Some of us are going to be just flat out liars, going to be running around telling people you got horses <laughs> when you grew up in, in, you know, in, the, in the ghetto somewhere. You know, and, and some of us are going to be saying, well, I need to tighten up in this area. You know, that right there, I'm not really living up to where I should be in this particular area. We're going to have to reach for it. Your one point for the day. God is my source. When we understand that God is our source, we praise him regardless of loss of property or loss of life. I'm not trying to make you inhuman. When you lose something, you are going to go through stages of grief. When you lose someone, you are going to need a bereavement process. But 
What I'm telling you is that if you do not address a holistic approach to honesty, you will have nothing to reach for in your time of crucible. I'm going to ask that you bow your head right now and just meditate. If you've never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and you want to belong to him, you want to be a part of what he's done for you. He, you want to access heaven when you leave this earth. Tomorrow is not promised. Any one of us can walk out of these doors and have something to happen to us. We're looking at what happened in Las Vegas, the senseless shooting. There are earthquakes and, and hurricanes more prevalent today than I've ever seen in my entire life. If you'd like to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm going to ask that you repeat after me loud enough to hear your own voice. There are other people in the room that are going to do the exact same thing. Would you repeat after me? Father, in the name of Jesus, please forgive me for my sin. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that he died and that he was raised for my sin. Please accept me, Lord, as I accept you. In Jesus' name, amen. With your heads raised, if you said that prayer with your mind, and you believe it in your heart, you are saved. I would only ask you if you'd like to receive a free Bible, your new salvation, or you'd like to talk to someone about uh, how you can be a better Christian. When you go out of that door and make the right, go down to our prayer room and talk to someone. Now there may be people in this room who lack the integrity, they, they know that they need to perform. I'm going to pray with you. So as we stand for the benediction and bring the lights up, hear the words of this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, The people in this room can change the world if we look to you for all that we need. When we understand, Lord God, that the things that we possess have nothing to do with our character, our conduct, or commitment. Father, I pray over this group of people today, Lord God, that they will invest in the theory, Lord God, that inside of them, they must be stronger than the outside. I pray, Father, that each person in this room will begin to search themselves to, to find that moral compass that works. I pray, God, that they will begin to hold close to them your word. And now, God, I pray that each believer in this place will live the life that they are called to live. Those, God, that are putting things in their body and that will destroy them, I pray that they will cease it right now. Those who are sleeping with people that they are not married to. Lord God, I pray that you will minister pureness to them right now. 
There are people in this room, God, that are still taking things unlawfully, God. They are involved in thievery, Lord Jesus, even though they know it is not proper. They are liars before us, God. God, I know that all these things can change. And so I pray this prayer over this congregation as we dismiss. We thank you and we praise you in the name of Jesus. Let us all say amen. Give God the glory. Be dismissed in the name.